For over 150 years, Tabasco's famous red pepper sauce has come from one place, Avery Island, a small area of land surrounded by bayous in southern Louisiana. It was first made by Edmund McElhenney, and the company has stayed in family control ever since. Every single CEO has been a descendant of McElhenney. Nowadays, hot sauce is everywhere, and although Tabasco is seen as a fixture in the industry, it's important to remember that when Tabasco was created, we were still over 100 years away from the buffalo wing. Hot sauce just wasn't a thing back then, and Tabasco laid the foundation for this whole movement that we're finally having now. Tabasco as a sauce really revolutionized America's idea of standardization, manufacturing, and distribution. I think a lot of people take for granted how hard it is to keep a product consistent with changes in weather and the growth of automation. There are just so many opportunities that companies have to take shortcuts on their ingredients. I'm out at Avery Island to see how the descendants of McElhaney have been making the same exact product for 150 years and meet the people responsible for creating one of America's most popular sauces of all time. It's the uh, capsicum frutescence variety yeah. Tabasco. From right here, it's five years from the time this pepper is essentially made into a bottle of Tabascos. This is the original plant that E. McElhenney, my great-great-grandfather, got. And then started making the sauce and pickling it with vinegar and let it sit for three years. But that was all sort of by accident how he came to three years. So it took him a little while to actually get the final recipe, but the process itself, as you'll see, is not, hasn't changed much. There's a few more pieces of equipment, but that's it. Everything used to be grown until the 60s right here on Avery Island. Then we started growing around Louisiana and then into Mexico and Venezuela and then all over. The main purpose of the growing operations on Avery Island is to grow huge fields of peppers and to choose only the top 1% of seeds to send away to be grown elsewhere. We look for the right plants, mm -hmm. we mark them, we pick them, and those seeds are used to send to Latin America mostly where we do the majority of our harvesting. Are these financially the most efficient pepper for you to work with? Absolutely not. <laughs> really? It's a more attractive looking pepper than a lot of them, but they're it's very inefficient. Why? They're very small, it's hard to get off. Are they all picked by hand or do you guys have machinery? No, they're all picked by hand. I mean, we've been trying to develop a machine that would do it, but it's just not very efficient. I'm gonna have a bite. What you'll feel is it starts working mostly on the front of your tongue and then it'll start going back. <laughs> it'll stop you from talking. <laughs> that was great, you just ate the whole thing. Thanks, yeah, I just wanted to show my commitment to the brand. Uh, it's also really cold outside and now uh, I feel like I'm a little bit warmer. I think we both look a little more red. Yeah, definitely. Once the peppers have been picked, the seeds are extracted and sent all over South America and Africa to be grown from seed to pepper. At that point, the peppers are combined with a little bit of salt and ground into a pepper paste which is then shipped back to Avery Island for processing in these large containers. All right, Ridge, go. Woo! <laughs> How many barrels do you fill up a day? So, 100 barrels. 100 barrels. Average. Is this a one-person job? Mm-hmm. You can do it all on your own? Mm-hmm. All right. You needed me a little, though, right? <laughs> Moral support. Yeah. Ah, so f***ing cool. I'm going. No. There you go. That's it. What separates us from everybody else and what we do is the aging for three years with this. This whole yeah. process. And there's a lot of people who are Tabasco fans or love Tabasco that have no idea the mash the pepper sauce is in it. Now we filled a bunch of barrels and we're gonna we're gonna put the lid on and get them ready for aging. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is its natural state. Um, all this is is ground Tabasco pepper the day it's picked with salt added to it. It doesn't take much, it is spicy. Very fresh, like grassy notes to it. Yeah. Like a fresh chili. Definitely you get some grass. So could you explain the, the, the reasoning for the salt lid that goes on here? So the salt that you're seeing here is not actually touch and mash at all. So there's a lid here, so obviously there's salt on top. So maybe if there's a small, small imperfection in that lid that we don't see, that salt jams itself in there and acts as a seal. Cool. And it does, it's an extra protective layer. Now the barrels are sealed and sent to the aging warehouse for over three years. I can't stress this enough, all of the world's future Tabasco is in this room. There's about 55,000 in here of these barrels. Jesus, this is all the future Tabasco. All the future Tabasco and each, each barrel makes approximately 10,000 two ounce bottles of Tabasco. <laughs> oh my God. 
but there's a lot in here. It is, you can kind of look down that one and... What? Do you kind of like the cobwebs a little bit? Yes, it's a natural way of keeping the, the insects down. This is so crazy because the barrels are like a living entity and obviously it would be so much easier to just put everything in a giant bin, like a controlled plastic or stainless bin. It's just such a human stage of this process. Now I got the chance to see what the three-year-old mash tasted like after spending all that time in the warehouse. Right here we have three years from now or time traveling. Correct. So this is the same? It's Absolutely. lost all this, yes. all this water? Correct, all this moisture. So that's part of the fermentation process. You have evaporation and things like that. Does it lose some of the spice? No. no. You almost get like a miso vibe. Mm -hmm. You get that fermentation. Right. It's not just straight salt. It's one cohesive unit now. It's not just a bunch of lone rangers in a barrel over That's there. It. So this is the blending department. This is where we uh, we take the three-year-old age mash and we make it in the uh, Tabasco red pepper sauce. The three-year-old mash then makes its way into the mixing room where it's combined with vinegar at a measure of 70-30 and mixed for approximately three weeks. Is this hot sauce heaven? Hot sauce heaven right there. I call it Salksville. Sauceville. Yeah. Are you Sauceville, the mayor? Louisiana. I'm the mayor. Come see me anytime. These are my, my vinegar tanks. So I get about uh, two truck loads of vinegar every day. 12,000 gallons go really, really fast. Okay, so this is the three-year-old mash. Yeah, this is three-year-old age mash ready to go. From here what happens is the three-year-old mash gets sucked into one of those machines and then mixed with vinegar. To the mixing tank upstairs. Gotcha. One of the ways Tabasco keeps the product consistent is by blending all of the peppers from the different countries together in each batch. Uh, we use 12 barrels, uh, a mixture of different uh, countries together. Like I might put three to four countries together. So that's how we get the 96 barrels every day we use every day. This, the, the nose in here is, is quite pungent. It smells like a, you get a little bit of the hot sauce, but it's just a lot of vinegar. How's it, you get used to it? Oh yeah, you gotta, you get used to it. I mean, after, you know, years of working over here, you get used to the smell and I don't smell anything. Even when I you do. walk in, first thing in the morning? First thing in the morning. You smell, think it smells like everything else? Smell like go time to me. <laughs> From the storage tanks down there, they get pumped up into here. And constantly stirred, 14 to 28 days. So this is the mash, the 12 barrels of mash, vinegar all mixed together. So from here, it gets strained. Every tank you're gonna get out like anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 pounds of seed. Okay. Pepper pulp, you're gonna get about 30, 40 pounds of pepper pulp. And then after everything comes out, then you get this, which is like finally what we know of as Tabasco. Tabasco, so it's ready to go. It, we, I, only thing I gotta do here is take a sample to the lab, let them test it for me. They test the salt, the pH, the acidity, the pungency, and they tell me it's good or not. We only make good stuff over here, so it's gonna be good. So what keeps you interested and excited is making something that is as close as possible to the thing that's been done for 150 years. Yeah, so doing that is it's tradition for me and it's, uh, when I go in the store, I get to see Tabasco brand pepper sauce on the shelf. You know, I, I had my hands in making this uh, and it's gone all over the world. So I'm just proud to, to be a part of it. Uh, the, the tradition that keeps, it seems like it yeah. just keeps going and going and going and going. It's not, it don't get much better than that. I mean, I like it. I, I, could, do, I could do it another 40 years. I mean, I, I, if I come to your house and you don't have Tabasco brand pepper sauce, it's going to be a quick visit. And so uh, <laughs> I just, just make sure you have it on the table, ready to go. You'll leave a restaurant? I'll leave a restaurant. Once the Tabasco sauce is finished and approved, it makes its way to the bottling facility, which is literally next door. Just a reminder that everything Tabasco happens on this island. So what goes on in there? So it's really, really pretty simple. The sauce comes down into a filler. You'll see the bottles go around. They get filled. They get labels put on them, they go in a carton, and then they go in a box. Okay. Really, really simple, but it's moving really fast and it's really pretty cool to see how dynamic it is. Yeah. And how many bottles are you guys get through a day? So on a good day. On a good day. On a good day, yeah. we'll make about 700,000 equivalized units. My great, great, great grandfather. You're related. I'm related. Ah. In his lifetime, he made 350,000 bottles. 30 years, 25 years of making Tabasco sauce, he made 350,000 bottles. Yeah. That's a shift right now, not even, half a shift. So really, 
the stages of this factory are organizing bottles, filling bottles, closing bottles. Pretty simple. But it's pretty cool that you guys do it here. How often is this factory running? This time of year, uh, during the fourth quarter kind of holiday season, we're running five days a week, almost 24 hours a day. No s Yeah, yeah oh we're busy. God. It gets kind of mesmerizing, like you can sit and watch this stuff and you just feel your mind go blank. It's really kind of incredible. In trying to figure out how Tabasco has gotten so popular over time, I think it's important to look at the consistency. The company is literally run by descendants of the same person that started it, and every single person who works here is obsessed with making the product as close as they can to the original product that was made. You've seen the process. Yeah. And you've tasted the mash, you've tasted the peppers. Frankly, I tasted too much product and byproduct because I was just eating that and nothing else. As a reward for all of your hard work, we have a... Whoa! Yes. So this is a stainless steel spoon. It's, it's sort of like a badge of honor. Like okay. if you, when you walk around the factory, people know that you tried the mash. Will yeah. they let me into bars in New Orleans with this thing? No, they'll probably arrest you if they see you. Or they think it's something else, but the granddaddy. Yeah, let's it, move mountains. The process for making sauces nowadays, it's like you grind everything up in it. We have to take stuff out of this mm -hmm. one. When you look at the flavor profile, it's fairly flat. It really needs to work with something. Yeah. And that's what we want. That's the purpose of this. I gotta say, you know, I was, I've said this before, but going through all the stages today and meeting all the people that really care about what goes in here, it changes it a bit for me. I'm, uh, I enjoyed that Tabasco bite a little bit more than I usually do. That's, that's really good to hear. That's what we're here to do. Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you for making the trip down and spending the time to learn about us a little bit. At this point, I think it's safe to say that hot sauces may come and go, but Tabasco has proven that it has staying power.